Hello friends, it's time for an easy and relaxed video about shopping. Yes, I'm still a striving minimalist, but I'm also staying a human who makes mistakes. And today I will share with you five things slash categories that I'm not buying in 2023 because I bought them in 2022 and regret it deeply. And in the end of the video, I will make a short recap of the lessons that I've learned from these purchases. Fake leather shoes. It was an unplanned, spontaneous purchase. When we arrived back to Serbia in September and started our process for uh, getting our one-year visa here, I had only one pair of shoes. It were my Birkenstocks. They also have full leather on top, but it was a very planned purchase. I've been choosing it for a pretty long time, reading reviews and so on. And also the store, the official store that I was buying it from, had uh, only that model for narrow feet available. In September there were colder days already and I would wear my Birkenstocks with socks sometimes and we also spent that month in an Airbnb in the countryside which was very curious time, to put it mildly. One day, when we were about to sign a lease agreement with our future landlord, my feet got very uncomfortable and cold, which just added to the overall stress and anxiety that I was feeling. And at that moment, Brian said that we should go to the nearest mall and just get at least something to cover my feet. And we found them in the men's section. I often wear men's shoes because I have longer feet. I actually liked the design, but I ignored two facts that I usually pay special attention to and avoid having those uh, characteristics in my shoes. It's for leather and low top design. And now this is the only pair of shoes that I have and I honestly don't feel like decluttering them just yet. Yeah, I don't hate them, they're just not my favorite. For leather doesn't wear out or age beautifully, and on the cold days my feet are cold, on warmer days my feet are warm. The only advantage of faux leather is that it's pretty water resistant. I usually wear canvas or real leather shoes until they fall apart, like what happened to my beloved sneakers this year and I don't think I will ever break my rule once again, even if my feet are desperately bare. Sweatpants. I was never able to wear sweatpants in, an, in a decent way, they always look out of place on me, but as soon as we got this apartment, I thought, why not getting a pair of soft, cozy sweatpants for wearing just at home and going to the store or for a walk in the park by the river, and I got them wide-legged sweatpants that I kind of hate right now <laughs> because they look too bulky and not in a way that I like. The bum and knee areas get stretched very fast, which looks terrible. This year, once again, I realized that I cannot compromise with style and it doesn't mean that I should always look like impeccable, elegant, whatever. I'm not a lady-looking woman, uh, but I do have my taste, which is, by the way, different for everyone. And there are certain things that make me feel not like myself and I try to avoid them, but I still, <laughs> I still make those silly purchases. Again, I'm, I'm just a human. The minimalist part of me whispers, come on, wear them, you've spent your money, but I don't like them, they don't make me feel great, but still I wear them at least two times a week at home when I work at my desk, but, and I'm not afraid to make this bold announcement, I'm never going to buy a pair of sweatpants again, ever, that's it. <laughs> Great value for money fits you all skincare. 
Skincare is one of my most dangerous indulgences and to make it clear, I don't own 4 lotions, 7 exfoliators, 12 toners, whatever, just everything in one piece. And now I'm back to using one skincare brand that I've been using for years back in Russia. But then it has become very expensive there, while here in Serbia for some reason it is rather affordable, so my skin feels much happier now. But there was one accident that taught me a very important lesson that I've forgotten. I've seen many YouTubers and bloggers talk and review a particular brand and a particular face lotion that has great value for money, has great formula and fits literally everyone. It is usually sold in pharmacies and drugstores. And I got caught in the marketing trap. I bought that lotion, although I saw that it contained two ingredients that had proven not to work for my skin because they cause irritation and dryness, but I still did it because I believed in the universal skincare magic. And the experiment failed and I'm never doing that again. What fits many will not necessarily fit you. One thing fits all principle doesn't work and it's a very simple truth that we are made forget by advertising and influencers. Zero waste natural skincare just for the sake of it being zero waste and natural. Yes, it's another skincare thing, my friends, I'm sorry, it's just obviously my weak point this year. I love natural skincare, uh, although it does not always work for me. For example, this year I stopped using natural deodorants, like at all. I'm just, I just got tired of my clothes being ruined very fast and the fact that I have to wash them every given day. And of course this experience is different for everyone, but if you are like me struggling with natural deodorants, you know what I mean. So I made a mental note about that, but yet <laughs> again a month ago i bought a very lovely looking zero waste natural body balm stick with coconut goodies it promised well everything that we are promised by cosmetic companies but it didn't work again it's a pain to apply without uh, extra greasiness and it also has a um, very specific flavor, like fragrance, that is not obvious right away, but I can feel it. I have a um, special aversion to one fragrance component that is usually used in coconut and vanilla flavored products, be them self-care or even food, and this component is called Cinnamol, and I can say for sure that it's present in that product, although it's not mentioned on the label. Yeah, or maybe I wasn't attentive enough. No, I don't think that they mentioned it. But to cut the long story short, it was a failure. Some people might say that I'm making a big deal out of small issues, but failed purchases are not only the waste of money, which is pretty sensible because smaller sums compile into a big sum, but it's also a waste of time and energy and also pollution because one or two unused waste-free products sitting in the bathroom cabinet is actually waste. Ebooks on sale. Yes, it's a number one mindful minimalist rule. Don't buy anything on sale. But it usually concerns clothes, home goods, or anything physical. I haven't heard people talk much about ebooks, for example, <laughs> because they are cheaper than actual books, they don't take up space, literally, and they are considered kind of an intelligent self care. So this year I went a bit overboard with it. My two favorite ebook stores had quite a few sales this year and I bought everything that I wanted or was interested in, which was quite a lot. But guess how many books I didn't like and I haven't read till the end. 
almost a half. With books, it's pretty hard to predict whether you will be satisfied or not. And for example, I'm a very picky reader and I never finish a book if I'm not in love with it. In one of my much, much earlier videos, I've already mentioned how I don't understand the trend of reading as many books as you can and bragging about it. And again, it's just my personal opinion that doesn't have to be the ultimate truth. This year I've read only 10 books from the first page to the last page and I've quitted reading even more books. And I still have about two dozens of new books sitting in my e-reader, which I think is a lot of clutter. That's why in 2023 I'm not buying any new e-books because they are on sale or they are widely discussed or like hugely promoted by YouTubers. And here's a recap of my unfortunate purchases. Think twice, don't get trapped by marketing, know thyself and stick to what works for you, not for anyone else. And once again, understand your reasons. This year has been very stressful and I resorted to shopping some days to make myself feel better, to recreate a cozy, homey feeling. And I just wanted to feel protected. I wanted to have many books in my native language that is not English. And that was how I tried to fight homesickness. I let myself be wrong and I try not to beat myself up for making mistakes. I'm just sharing my experience and my thoughts and I hope that you find this helpful, especially now that the days are starting to grow again and we can welcome more light in our life. Please feel free to share in the comments what purchases you are not going to repeat in 2023 and what shopping regrets made you understand yourself better. And for now, be safe and keep your heart open and I hope to see you soon. Пока-пока!